Hey everyone, it's Hunter Elmore here, your design consultant with Gravity Sketch. Today, we're gonna to take a look at colors, textures, and materials. We're gonna take you through a workflow that shows how to use the color and materials panel and covers the options you have in applying and manipulating the texture and material of your designs. Proficiency in this workflow will allow you to better reflect the personality, style, and overall branding of your sketches, which of course will help to communicate your design intent. Let's start with a sketch. In this case, we're working with this truck model. If you want to follow along or use the same model, you can find this one in the Community Designs portion of the Asset Library under the name Truck by Hunter Elmore. Right now, as you can see, the model's a little bit bland. It's a simple gray clay material throughout the entire thing, and while that might be helpful for visualization or for evaluating surfaces and form, we want to spice things up a bit and make our sketch look more realistic. To change the material of an object, all we need to do is hover our grab sphere over the intended object and hold down our grab trigger. Then, while we're holding that object, we can click our color wheel button, which is the lower button on our dominant hand. Doing this will cause the material menu to open on your off hand and display the object's current material, in this case, gray. From here, we can use our dominant hand to interface with the color wheel to select a specific color. You can also adjust the value of your color by adjusting the depth of your color picker in the menu. Pushing further will result in darker values, while pulling back will lead to lighter ones. In this case, let's go with a nice red. So once we find that, and that's the color we want, we can click our dominant hand index trigger to select it. This will apply that material to the object. So now that you can see that has been applied, that looks pretty good, but the clay still looks a bit flat for an automotive surface. We can fix that by clicking on the material drop-down menu here. This will show us the variety of preset materials that are currently available. For an automotive surface, I highly recommend starting with either the reflective or gloss shaders. For now, let's go with gloss. Clicking on that will change the shader properties, but retain your color and any pre-existing textures that have been applied to the material. Just using that preset has already made this surface much more descriptive and visually appealing, but if you want to take this one step further, each of these shaders has a drop-down menu in itself. So these sliders will allow you to fine-tune values of the shaders such as roughness, metallic, and a few others depending on the shader. They're different for each preset, so I highly recommend checking each preset out. For instance, the gloss shader allows you to alter an additional value called hue shift, which actually changes the color of your reflected highlight, whereas the reflective material has an added option for clear coat, which makes your object have a real nice gloss finish over top of whatever roughness is underneath. Which material is best will depend on what you're trying to achieve. In this case, for a descriptive but emotional automotive surface, let's go back to the gloss material. Once you've adjusted these settings to your desired result, you can navigate to the swatch menu by clicking this icon. Here, you can find your saved materials. In your case, you may not have any yet. So to save your current material for later use, all you need to do is click this button here, name your material, and it will pop up in this menu. This is a great way to organize your materials for future use, whether it be in this current sketch or in any of the other sketches you're going to create in the future. Now, since I'm happy with that material and I've saved it, I can click the check mark button on my non-dominant hand to close the color menu. Now the main body looks pretty good, but what about something like a glass shader for the windshield? And how might that differ? Well, let's edit the object's material by following the same workflow. Reach out with your grab sphere, grab and hold the object, and click the color wheel button on your dominant hand. Again, that will open the material menu on your non-dominant hand. For glass, we can set the color to a very dark gray or black. In this case, let's add a little bit of blue in there too. Then we can set the material to reflective and the roughness slider to zero, which will give us very crisp reflections. Now it's looking pretty good, but I'm not able to see through that object as if it were transparent glass. To achieve that transparency, we can use the transparency slider just below the color wheel. Adjusting that all the way to the right will leave us with a fully opaque material, whereas sliding all the way to the left will result in a much more transparent material. In our case, I'm gonna set this somewhere in between for a tinted glass effect. I also like to turn on the clear coat toggle to really highlight those reflections on the surface. You'll notice that those reflections stay at their normal opaque level and the material itself becomes transparent. This is great because it behaves a lot more closely to how glass behaves in real life with reflections bouncing back towards me, but the transparency of the material allowing me to see through it. Now that we're happy with it, I can save this material under the name glass and hit the check mark to complete the editing process. Again, that just saves that material for any future use so that I don't have to make redundant moves to recreate this material in the future. Now you can follow this flow for the rest of the objects in your scene, 
In my case, I used a dark gray base material for the plastic trim pieces and a flat white and red for the headlights and brake lights. When you have a sketch like this, you're probably going to run into a situation where you want to quickly transfer a material from one object to another and have those match perfectly. For instance, these side mirror housings should match my main body color. To achieve that, I need to edit their material by reaching out, grabbing, and hitting the color wheel button. Same thing we've done a couple times now. Now where we're differing is I have a couple different options here. Because I saved the material after I created it, I could just go to that menu and click the save material. This will make sure that it's the exact same material that I previously saved. If for some reason I hadn't saved the material, I can click on this button to the left of my color wheel. This will spawn a paintbrush and eyedropper tool on my dominant hand. At first, that tool will be a paintbrush, which allows me to apply the current material to any object in the room simply by reaching out and holding down my dominant hand index trigger. Alternatively, I can press right or left on my dominant hand thumbstick to toggle this brush to the eyedropper tool. The eyedropper tool allows me to reach out and sample any material in my room. In doing so, it applies that material to the object that I've currently selected. Now, my side mirrors match my main body color. For the plastic trim pieces, I can save time by using the paintbrush tool to apply that material to any other object that needs to match. Again, to access the paintbrush, edit the material, and click on this button in the material menu next to the color wheel. Now, when I click on an object, I can apply my current material to that object. When you have a sketch with a lot of individual pieces, this is a much faster way to apply matching materials. So far, everything's looking great. I could continue to use this flow to apply my materials to the rest of the objects in my scene, but specifically for these plastic components, I want to get a little bit more advanced. Most plastic pieces in reality have a light texture applied to their surface. I can mimic this in Gravity Sketch by applying an image texture to the material. To do that, I'll first need to import a reference image. If you're not familiar with this flow, I recommend watching our reference image guide video. Now that that image has been placed in the room, we can go back to our material editing menu. You'll notice that there's this small box on the material settings that says drop image. All you need to do is reach out, grab your image, and place it in this box. Doing so will apply the image texture to the object and material that you currently have selected. It will retain your current material settings, so any shader and color will apply over top of the material. In this case, I'll set it to a lighter color to more clearly see the texture. From here, I might want to rescale or adjust the position of the texture on the object. To do that, I just need to hit this option that says Edit Texture, which will enter the texture editing mode. Now I can reach out with my grab sphere and grab the texture on the object to move and scale it. Once I'm happy with the result, I can click this button to exit the texture edit mode and save my changes. While the result we're seeing here is pretty subtle, you can use this same approach with materials like carbon fiber, cloth textures for seats, and tons of other applications. This texturing helps to define your design intent just a little bit further and make those collaborative design reviews just a little bit more effective. So once I'm done applying all of the materials that I want, my design's ready to share, whether it be in VR, the Screen Collab application, or even through screenshots. That being said, one last tip to really help your materials pop is to utilize the environment settings to dial in your lighting. Setting a simple HDR or adjusting your scene lighting can drastically improve the appearance of your materials. While this flow is a little bit more advanced, and we will cover it in another tutorial, we'll get you started by showing where you can find those settings. Simply press the general menu button on your non-dominant hand, navigate to settings, and click on this environment tab up at the top. From here, you can adjust the scene in a variety of ways, or simply affect the global lighting by using the flashlight. We'll explain this more thoroughly in another tutorial, but definitely wanted to mention that this is a great way to make your materials pop that little bit more. You can see here, just applying one of our built-in HDRs really brings out those highlights and reflections and brings everything to life. If you want to take it one step further, you can even turn on one of our preset environment HDRs, which will affect the background as well, or upload one of your own. While it is an extra step, I think you'll agree that it's well worth the effort. In most of our design workflows, we apply an HDR like this early on in the process, meaning that we're able to more accurately refine highlights and materials even at early stages. So in this case, we save the visualization step for a more finalized sketch model, but there's no reason to wait that long into the process. Applying this level of visualization and material will only make your designs more informed when implemented at an earlier stage. Now, when I share my work with another stakeholder, they're able to evaluate the design and intent in a holistic and informed manner. Whether I invite them to a VR collab session, have them hop on Screen Collab to review my work, or simply share some screenshots, 
My design intent is as clear as possible. Our review is that much more effective and my thought process in the design has gone that much further. So now you know the ins and outs of materials in Gravity Sketch. Again, the asset shown in this tutorial can be found on landing pad or in a headset under our community designs folder. It's just one of hundreds of sketches that you can use for inspiration or for help learning workflows in Gravity Sketch. Go check them out if you have an account or sign up for a free account to access them and try this workflow yourself. Thanks for watching and we can't wait to see what you make next.